Hello everyone, my name is Amelia and I have a YouTube channel with my sister Maddie and it's called Talking Over Tea and we talk a lot about books and what we're reading and today I wanted to share one book that I just finished recently and that is The List by Patricia Forty. Now this is a middle grade dystopian book set in a city called Ark and this is a society where only 500 words are permitted to be spoken and not cooperating could cost you your life. The wordsmith and his apprentice Letta are the only ones who are allowed to speak the old language, which is basically what we speak now. When the wordsmith dies, Letta is basically left on her own to catalog the words of Ark. And one day she discovers a very sinister plan to completely destroy words and language and Letta finds that she is the only one as the new wordsmith who has the knowledge to uh, save the words and the culture that she has grown up in. So this book brought up many interesting and kind of complex ideas to put into a 350 page middle grade book and I almost felt like I couldn't tell exactly what the author was trying to show the reader and what she was telling us to believe. So this was something I kind of both did and didn't like about this book. I liked that the author wasn't exactly shoving her own ideas into the book and was kind of leaving things open-ended. However, I think it kind of took me aback to not exactly know what the author was trying to tell me. For example, I wasn't sure if this goddess that the people of Ark worship was something the author was trying to say was a good and just way to live, or if she was trying to tell us that it was causing more harm than good to the society, it was kind of unclear. Also, I couldn't tell if she was trying to tell us that global warming and climate change was something that we should fear, and that fear could cause us to go down a wrong path, or if she was kind of telling us that we shouldn't fear that, and fearing it could lead to a lot of destruction. And also that the corrupt leader who was fearing this was just overreacting, possibly. But regardless of what she was trying to tell us with these ideas, this story did bring up a lot of interesting worldviews and bits and pieces of different ideas. A very notable topic in this book was definitely fear. We really see how fear can lead to destruction so quickly. John Noah, who is the creator of the city Ark, um, you can tell how he has been living his entire life in fear. Now it has basically been motivating him to make all the decisions that he has made. You see how that does a lot of harm to the people in this society because of the fear that he has had that their society will be destroyed if he doesn't take these actions. Um, he's basically destroying them in the process. We also have Leda who has grown up with fear as well. She's been She's been taught to fear these different things and to fear the outside world and to fear what words can do. We see how she actually changes as she realizes that fear is something we can overcome and fear is not what should dictate our lives. Another topic brought up in this book is that of knowledge and that we can make our own decisions and have our own thoughts. One of the characters, Marlo, he states on page 87, that I envy your ability to believe in Noah without question. I just know I can't do it. This definitely struck me as something very relevant to us today. Often it's so much easier to just not know the truth or to not think for ourselves and just believe what others are telling us to. But I think this book really brought up the very important yet so difficult task of choosing to think for ourselves and to question what others tell us before just blindly believing it. The main theme of this book, though, was the power of words. The leader, John Noah, believed that taking away the power of speech basically takes away the power from the whole society, and it is definitely an interesting topic to ponder. I was finding myself realizing that I haven't looked at words in that way, you know, they're kind of just viewed as the tool to communication, and not as something that is allowing us to think for ourselves and choose the way that we are going to live. And when you remove words, you're removing your ability to think and comprehend. And it's definitely something we should all be thinking about more, especially as our reading comprehension levels have gone down in society and we are not valuing the ability to read and think as much as we once did. Throughout the whole time I was reading this book, I was kind of unsure how many stars I wanted to give it. I didn't really know what to rate this. And then at the end of the book, I decided upon three stars. While the book did bring up some interesting points, I was having some trouble with the pacing and the setup of the story. It kind of felt like Letta did a lot of things throughout this story that 
um, were later reversed or just became unimportant. Um, I don't I don't know if unimportant is the right word, but a lot of things weren't building on themselves like you see in a lot of stories and I feel like this kind of took away some of the weight and meaning that it could have had along with some other minor things that I struggled with in this book like the kind of unfleshed out side characters and the very undescribed world that they lived in it wasn't quite as notable of a story as I feel like it could have been to me. Well, I certainly don't think it's the fantasy book of the year, as Owen Colfer put it on the cover of this book. I do think this book brought up some very interesting and heavy topics for a middle grade book, and it caused me to think a lot more about some topics I hadn't given much consideration to. So I just want to thank you for watching my thoughts on this book, and thank you to Literary Gladiators for asking me to review a book for this. It's been really fun, and I'm so glad I had this opportunity.